Hello everyone. Welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. So today we are discussing problem of the day that is minimum repeat to make substring. So let's quickly have a look on the problem statement. So problem statement is given two strings S1 and S2 return a minimum number of times S1 has to be repeated such that S2 is a substring of it. Okay. Basically we are given two strings and we have to return how many times I have to add S1 such that S2 becomes the substring of S1. Okay. If S2 can never be a substring, then we have to return a minus one. Okay. And in the note part, what we are given, both the string contains only lowercase le letters. So that's why uh, we will be only having the lowercase letter in both the strings, right? So that is the problem statement. And it's quite clear what we have to find out. We have to find out the minimum number of times I have to add S1 so that the resultant string S of that S1 so that S2 becomes the substring of the resultant string S1. Okay. So let's quickly see what are the examples that are given to us. So here you can see that this is the example number one. So in example number one, we have been given uh, S1 as WW and S2 as three times WWW. Okay. So here you can see that uh, S1 is lesser than S2. It means that the length of S1 is lesser than S2. So I have to add S1 one more time to make it greater than or equals to S2 because in that way only I will be able to find out if S2 is uh, is the substring of S1 or not. Okay. So I will add S1 one more time. So that's why uh, my substring of S1 resultant substring S1 becomes WWW. Here you can see that if I take out three W's from these four W. So here I will be getting string S2 as a substring in resultant string S1. Okay. So that's why answer for this example number two, example number one is coming out to be equals to two. Okay. How many times we have repeated our S1 string? So we have repeated two times. So that's why answer is two times two. Okay. Let's see the example number two. So in the example number two, we have been given A, B, C, D and string S2 is C, D, A, B, C. D A B. Okay, these are the two strings that are given to us. Now again, we have to find out how many number of times I have to add S1 so that the resultant string S1, resultant string S1, uh, S2 is the substring of the resultant string S1. Okay, so let's see how many times we have to add. So here we have to add three times S1. So here you can see that I have added S1 three times. So this is the resultant string S1. So S1 will become like this and S2 will now become a part or a substring of S1, right? So here you can see that C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B. So this is the string S2, which is the substring of string S1. Okay, so that's why the answer for this example number two will be three. So I have to return a three here. So I hope the problem statement and the examples are clear. So let's quickly see how we can approach this problem. So basically, what is the first thing that we have to note here? So first thing that we have to note here is that first of all, I have to make the length of string S1 greater than or equals to S2. Okay. In that way only I will be able to check if S2 is a substring or not because if S2 length is greater than S1, then it that case S2 will never be the substring of S1. Okay. So the first thing is that we have to make our string S1 greater than or equals to the length of the string S2. Okay. So first thing we will be adding S2 that much times, right? The next thing that we have to note here is that I have to find out the minimum number of times. So what can I do here? So whenever the length of the string S1 becomes greater than or equals to S2, then I will stop at that point because I have to find out what is the minimum number of times I have to add S1. So whenever I am getting this condition S2, it means that the length of S1 string is coming out to be greater than or equals to the length of S2. In that case, I will stop and then I will check if S2 is a substring of S1 or not. Okay, so I hope the approach is very clear. Let's see how we can do this. So we will be having one temporary string. So let's say this is a string temporary. So this will be storing the uh, string A because we are going to use the same string to update the value. So it will store the initial value of string A or uh, string S1. Okay, let's see if uh, let's say we are having a string S1. So temporary is initially assigned with string S1. After that, we will be running a while loop. So while S1 dot size 
is lesser than or equals to s2 dot size not equals to only lesser than so while s1 dot size is lesser than s2 dot size so whenever this value is 2 i have to add s1 to the uh, s1 again i have to add temporary to s1 because i have to first of all make sure that the length of string s1 is greater than or equals to s2 okay so what i will do so i will just take s1 and i will add temporary into this s1 right also i will have to keep the track of the number of counts uh, how many times we have added so i will be uh, taking one counter variable that will be initialized with one right so i will increase the count by one uh, stating that i have added one more part of s1 into one part of temporary into this s1 uh, string so that's why i have increasing i am increasing the count variable okay so after this while loop is finished i will check if s2 is a substring or not okay so check if s2 is a substring of s1 or not so that's the approach that we are going to uh, follow here okay so let's see how we can code this up so first of all i will make one temporary string so it will be initialized with s1 and i am also taking one counter variable that is initialized with one okay after that uh, while s1 dot size s1 dot size is lesser than s2 dot size we will be running a while loop and we will be adding temporary into my s1 string why because first of all we have to make sure that uh, the length of string s1 is greater than string greater than or equals to string s2 okay so s1 plus equals to temp and also increase the value of counter variable by one so counter plus plus okay now i have to check if string s2 is a substring of uh, s1 or not so if s1 dot find s2 is not equals to minus one in that case i can say that it is present as a substring so in that case we can return a counter variable here we will be having one more condition so let's see why we have to add one more condition here so suppose the string that is given to us s1 is equals to um, 1 2 3 4 and s2 is equals to 3 4 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 okay so let's see we have these uh, do these two strings so here first of all we will be adding string s1 multiple times so first of all my string s1 is like this 1 2 3 4 so since size is lesser i will add 1 2 3 4 again so now 1 2 3 4 okay so here you can see that after adding 1 2 3 4 the size becomes greater size here of s1 becomes 8 and s2 is also 8 okay it is also 8 so we will stop here we are not going to add s1 again so we will stop here but here you can see that if i try to find out that uh, if s2 as a substring is present in s1 or not so it's always going to give me the answer as minus one it means that s2 is not present as a substring in s1 but here if i add s1 one more time so it will become one two three four then one two three four then one two three four okay so i have added s1 three times now again check if s2 is present or not so here you can see that this substring that is three four one two three four and one two so here you can see that you have got s2 as a substring in this s1 string where we have added s1 three times okay so here you can see that this thing can fail uh, so what we can do we can have additional condition that if s1 not find s2 it means that substring is present as a uh, s2 is present as a substring in s1 so we can def definitely return account else what can i do i can again add one more time so s1 plus equals to temporary so again i have added one more time temporary into my s1 string and increase the counter by one because we have added one more time uh, string temp into my s1 now again check the same condition if s1 dot find s2 is not equals to minus one then again check the same condition so if it is true then we can return a val uh, value of count else if this is not true so here we are not going to have s2 as a substring in s1 so that's why i will be returning a minus one in the end okay so return minus one right so that is the uh, implementation let's quickly see if it's if it's running or not okay so yeah it's working fine for the visible test cases let's try to compile and run okay so yeah it's working fine for all the test cases okay so let's discuss about the time complexity so the time complexity here would be okay so if uh, the size of a string s2 is m so the time complexity would be order of m okay so i hope this 
वीडियो इज हेल्पफुल फॉर यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो